بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم النهارده ان شاء الله هنكمل مع بعض الجزء بتاع الاميونولوجي في الكورس بتاع البيزك مايكروبيولوجي اميونولوجي في ام 401 ان شاء الله هكمل معاكم بقيه المقرر بتاع الاميونولوجي وهنبتدي النهارده نتكلم على اول موضوع انا بنسميه الكومبلمنت سيستم today ان شاء الله we will talk uh, we'll continue uh, the immunology part from your uh, basic microbiology and immunology course and we'll start talking about the complement uh, system so uh, what we'll know today will be uh, all related to the complement uh, system uh, we'll know what is the complement system how it is activated and what are the outcomes of this activation and very important part how this complement is regulated so that we are not getting adverse effects from the complement activation and finally how pathogens manage to evade this complement system which is designed to get rid of them and they manage to be resistant to the complement so the first part will be dealing with uh, complement system uh, from what it is composed and how it is uh, working. It consists of more than 30 proteins. They are present in the serum of the blood and also part of these components is present within the tissues uh, throughout the body. However, most of it are serum proteins. The system is named the complement. Why it is named the complement? And this is very historical. When we start learning about immunology, we thought that the antibodies, then we know that we have uh, immune uh, cells. However, what we discovered later is that we have other systems that complete the work of this immune components which are the cells and the antibody and this was the complement uh, system a very important question that usually comes up when we are talking about the complement system is it part of the innate immunity or it is part of the adaptive immunity so the clear-cut answer it is part of the innate immunity because the complement system is not adaptable it never change over the person lifetime so this is part of the innate immunity so why the confusion is happening the confusion is happening because it can be recruited it can be activated into and come into action by the adaptive immune system as we will see shortly like it can be activated by the presence of certain antibodies that recognize certain antigens and you know well that antibodies are part of the adaptive immune system however the complement itself is part of the innate immune system because it is not adaptable it never changed throughout the life of the person so Historically, the complement system consists of proteins. We used to name them uh, with the capital letter C. Then we number them C1, C2, C3, C4, and so on. And the most important proteins are numbered from C1 to C9. Uh, you need to keep in mind that this numbering is related to their discovery. So the first protein we discovered, we name it C1. The second protein we discovered is named we name it c2 c3 c4 however as we will see shortly when the complement system is activated this is not the order they are working with so you will find that c4 is coming before c3 in the activation uh, process so the numbering is related to when they were discovered the one we discovered first took a smaller number c1 c2 c3 and so on so when the complement system is activated we have certain rules uh, these rules applies and you need to be very well familiar with it so usually the complement proteins are in an inactive state in uh, the serum 
till they are activated. And the activation of the complement system usually happens in the form of a cascade, you know, like uh, the domino, when you have this domino aligned behind each other and you kick the first one, what will happen? You will start a starting a cascade event, like one is activated, you activate the following one, activate the following one, and so on. And usually the activation of the complement component is in the process of splitting this component into two fragments. So usually we have, for example, uh, C4. So C4, when it gets activated, it's split into two parts. One we name it C4A, and one we name it C4B. And the rule that will apply on all types of uh, complement protein that we have a small fragment and we have a large fragment. The small fragment we will name it uh, C, uh, like uh, we have for example C four uh, B, uh, sorry C four C four. Uh, C let's talk about C three here. So three will get activated into C three A and C three B. So what happens to these two fragments? The B fragment will always continue in the process. This will be involved in the activation of the following component. While the A fragment will get released in uh, away from the process and it will have other roles. Again, when we have a complement component, it will get split into two parts, A and B. The A usually a small part while the B is the bigger fragment. Again, you can remember it by big B. So the bigger fragment is the one that will get involved in the activation of the following complement component. As we said, they are activated in a cascade manner. While the A fragment will get released from the process and have some secondary this rule applies to all complement component except C2. C2, when it got activated, it split into C2A and C2B. C2A, actually, this time, is the bigger fragment, and it is the one that is involved in the following steps of the complement activation, while C2B is the small fragment that is released and doing a secondary role. All the other components, when they are activated, the A fragment is small and released and not involved in the activation of the following components, while the B fragment is the bigger one and it is the one that is involved in the activation of the following uh, component. So, how activation takes place? Activation of the complement system can happen in three pathways or three ways. They are namely called the classical pathway, the alternative pathway, and the lectin pathway. And again, the process is very uh, historic. When they discovered the first way, it was the classical pathway. And however, later they discovered that there is another way by which the complement system can be activated. So what shall they name, the, name it? They decided, okay, this is the alternative pathway. So this is the classical, and this is the alternative pathway. Later, they discovered a third method or pathway through which the complement can be activated. So they cannot call it the alternative of the alternative. So they name it by one of its components and it's known as the lectin pathway. So let's quickly have a small brief idea about each of these three pathways. The classical pathway it is initiated by the binding of antibodies to antigen to form a complex. For example, here we have a microbe and it has antigens on its surface. This antigen part of the adaptive immune response to this microbe that we have antibodies against the antigens on the surface of the microbe. So the binding of the antibody to the specific antigens on the surface of the uh, 
target, the microbial cell in this case, is the trigger for the classical pathway uh, activation of the complement uh, system. So the formation of this complex, the antigen antibody uh, complex, will bind and activate C1, the first component of the classical pathway. C1 will accordingly activate two components, C2 and C4. If you remember, we said activation of complement components means splitting into two fragments, A and B. The A is released and the B fragment is continuing in the activation of the following uh, component. So, except C2. So, what happened with C4? The C4 will get activated into C4B and C4A. The C4A will get released while the C4B will remain. For the C2, it is the exception, the C2B will get released while the C2A will get attached to the C4B in order to act on the following uh, component of the complement pathway, which is in this case the C3. So the C2A, C4B will act on the C3 uh, component and activate it. The activation will result in what? In the release of the C3A and the C3B will be the one involved in the following steps of the complement uh, activation. Okay, so this is part of the classical pathway. We ended up by having C3A release and C3B ready to get involved in the following step in the complement uh, pathway. The C3A usually has a role in what we call the inflammation and will come later on the function of each component by uh, itself, while the C3B will continue in the following step. If we check the alternative pathway, the alternative pathway, as the name implies, it is an alternative method for the classical pathway. And this was the historical uh, nomenclature for this pathway. How the alternative pathway is activated or how the complement is activated by the alternative pathway. The activation usually happens by contact between certain complement proteins and a pathogen. Here we don't have an antibody. We don't have an immunoglobulin. We don't have part of the in acquired or adaptive immunity. Here a contact between a protein of the complement system with components on the surface of a microbe or a pathogen. So we have C3 constantly present in the blood. It combines with complement proteins, namely factor B, factor D, and properbin. So we have C3 have binding to factor B, factor D, and properbin, and they can bind on the surface of the microbe. The complement proteins are attached to the microbial cell, mostly which are lipids, carbohydrates, complex of certain bacteria and fungi. Not all bacterial pathogens can bind to these complement proteins. Only certain types with certain chemical structures of their carbohydrates and lipids on their surface can attract the complement protein factor B, factor D, and proberdin to be attached to them. Once a complement uh, proteins combine, uh, they interact with the C3. So those are the activators of C3, the factor B, D, and proberdin in the alternative pathway is what are what activates C3. So when C3 is activated, it's split into C3B and C3A. C3A will go in the inflammation process and C3B will continue with us. So this is how the complement is activated, reaching the same stage we have reached with the classical pathway that we have C3B and C3A. The last method by which the complement can get activated is what is known the lectin pathway. So in the lectin pathway, 
instead of the C1 complex or the complement proteins, factor B, factor D, and properdin, we have what is known as the mannose binding lectin, MBL. And from we, here, the pathway got its name, mannose binding lectin. The mannose binding lectin is a protein which binds to carbohydrates. Which types of carbohydrates? Only mannose, which is present on the surface of some microorganisms. The MPL, when it binds to the surface of many microorganisms, uh, it recognizes a distinctive pattern of carbohydrates. It's not just any mannose on the surface of a bacteria that it will bind. It requires special arrangements. The mannose need to be present on certain arrangement on the carbohydrates on the surface of the bacteria so that MPL can bind uh, it. Okay? This is not only bacteria. Some actually some viruses have also this uh, carbohydrate uh, arrangement. So what happens when MPL binds to the surface of a bacterial surface? It acts like C1 in the classical pathway, but in this time, we don't have antibody antigen complex. So the MPL binds to the surface of the bacteria. It activates C4 and C2 in the same manner as we have happened in the classical pathway. C4 will get activated into C4B, which will continue, continue with us, and C4A, which will get released. C2 is the exception, it will get activated. C2A is the one that will continue, and C2B will get released. The combination of C2A and C4B is the one that will act on the activation of the following component, which is a T3. So C3 will get activated into C3B, which will continue on the process, and C3A, which will get released and is involved in the process of uh, inflammation. So those are the three possible activation pathways of the complement system. دول الثلاث طرق اللي ممكن يحصل بيهم اكتيفيشن للكومبلمنت بالثلاثه باسوي ده اما كلاسيكال باسوي يبقى في عندي انتجين وانتي بادي اي اكتيفيت السي 1 والسي 1 يشتغل على ال 4 وال 2 بعد كده يشتغلوا على ال 3 لا اما الترنيتيف باسوي سيرتن كومبوننتس على السيرفيس بتاع بعض البكتيريا بتبايند الكومبلمنت كومبوننتس فاكتور بي وفاكتور دي والبروبيرد اللي بيشتغلوا بعد كده على ال سي 3 ويأكتيفيتو C3 ويشتغل C3A و C3B أو الليكتين باسوي منوز structures بسرطن arrangement على السيرفس بتاع بعض البكتيريا بيمسك عليها ال MPL ويأكتيفيتو C4 و C2 وال C4B مع ال C2A يشتغلوا على ال C3 ويشتغل على ال C3B هيكمل معانا و C3A هيحصل له ريليز ويجيت انفولد في العملية بتاعة الانفلاميشن. طيب حصل في الثلاثة باثوي دول وي جوت اكتيفيتد كومبلمنت اند وي ريتش ذا ستيج اوف سي 3 بي انفولد ان ذا بروسيس اوف ذا اكتيفيشن ستيل اتاتش تو ذا تارجت سيرفيس اوف ذا تارجت سيل اند سي 3 اي ريليز. سو What are the possible outcomes of this activation? So we have these components. So what could happen after that? The first outcome and the one that will get involving all the rest of the complement components is what is known as cytolysis. Cytolysis meaning lysis of the cell. We will lyse the target cell, the microbial cell on which the complement system has been activated on its surface will get lost. So how this happen? C3 is split into C3A and C3B. C3A is released and involved in the inflammation process. C3B will continue the process and act on C5. C5 will get activated will split into two parts, C5A and C5B. C5A will get released, C5B will get involved in the activation of the following component, which is C6 followed by C7, C8 
aid and they start to recruit C much again for the cytolysis which could happen following the activation of any pathway classical alternative or lectin we have C3B activate C5 C5B will act on 6 and 7 and 8 they will start to aggregate in the membrane of the cell and recruit C9 C9 starts the process of what's known as polymerization polymerization so we end up by having 12 C9 components which will form a channel will form a pore inserted in the membrane of the target cell and this is known as the membrane attack complex or the MAC so the MAC is a combination of polymerized C9 which is inserted in the membrane of the target cell leading to the lysis of the cells the lysis of the cells means the death of the cells if you get a hole in the membrane of a cell everything will start leaking outside and this cell will die okay this will happen on the surface of the microbial cell the cell on which the complement got activated by any way lectin uh, uh, alternative or classical so why this is not happening on the host cells the host cells are not lysed by the complement system why because they are protected against lysis by having certain proteins and those proteins prevent the membrane attack complex pro uh, formation and therefore they protect themselves now back to the microbiology part we took gram positive bacteria and we took gram negative bacteria if you remember the arrangement of the structure of the cell envelope gram positive bacteria have a very thick peptidoglycan layer than the cell membrane on the other hand the gram negative bacteria have an outer membrane very thin peptidoglycan than the uh, in the periplasm than the inner membrane or the plasma membrane that's why gram positive bacteria are not susceptible to membrane attack complex formation you cannot insert this membrane attack complex in the cell membrane of the gram positive bacteria because you will need to pass through this thick layer of the like however in gram negative bacteria you can make holes in the outer membrane and in the inner membrane easily because you don't have this uh, thick layer of peptidoglycan that's why we say gram negative bacteria are more susceptible to cytolysis uh, within gram positive bacteria so this means that gram positive bacteria getting rid of them does not require the complement no it happens but through other uh, outcome of the complement activation which is op opsonization if you recall i think you should have uh, this terminology before opsonization means that we are covering the object with an opsonine a material that will enhance the process of phagocytosis uh, so actually c3 the activated c3 c3 a is involved in inflammation we'll talk about it later c3 b is a very good opsonine if we cover the bacterial cell with C3B, phagocytes have receptors for C3B on their surface. So they will get attracted to the microbial cell, which is covered by C3B. This means that the microbe now is opsonized, is covered with the material that will enhance phagocytosis. So the phagocytes will get recruited and the receptors will bind to C3B and kill, especially here, the gram-positive bacteria by the C3B. So this is the second outcome of complement activation that you have uh, opsonization and recruitment of phagocytes that will kill this uh, or destroy this cell uh, by uh, phagocytes. The third possible outcome for the complement activation is the process of 
uh, inflammation. As we mentioned, C3 split into C3A. C3A is released and also C5A is released from the activation of the C5. What they do, C3A and C5A, they bind to the mast cells and they cause them to release the histamine. The mast cells have receptors for C3A and C5A. C3A and C5A binds, activate the mast cell, and they release the histamine stored in their granules. And these chemicals, the histamines and other mediators, will increase the blood vessels permeability and, and this is a hallmark of the inflammation where you get this swelling and hotness due to the increase in the uh, in vascular permeability of the blood uh, vessels. Also, C5A function as what we call the chemotactic factor. Chemotactic, chemo get from chemical, tactic means attraction. Chemotactic factor, a, fa a chemical factor that will attract. Attract what? Attract phagocytes to the site of infection, and this will result in more uh, inflammation and uh, more uh, recruitment of immune cells to deal with the uh, infection. So now we will move to the last part of our uh, lecture talking about the regulation of the component, how the component system is uh, regulated uh, since we are seeing like the outcomes of its activation is very serious. So we should make sure that this activation is occurring under very tight uh, regulation. So once the complement components are activated is destructive uh, and its destructive capabilities usually uh, cease very quickly uh, to minimize the destruction of the host cell so as you can see if you are making holes in the membranes of the cell so you should be very specific very targeted and also very uh, quick usually this is accomplished by various regulatory proteins which are present in the Host. For example, we have a regulatory protein called CD59. CD59 is present on a human cell. It prevents the assembly of the C9 molecules to form the membrane attack complex. So, if you are a host cell and missing your CD59, so complement could be activated and lyse this uh, cell. On the other hand, bacteria are surviving killing by complement. How? They are most of the time mimicking, uh, trying to mimic the host to be look like as a host cell. And there are different mechanisms by which the bacteria can evade killing by the complement system. For example, some of them have capsules. You must have heard them in the microbiology part. Capsules are thick coats that are tightly bound to the surface of the cell and it provides a means of protection. So actually the presence of the capsule prevents the complement activation. Some gram-negative bacteria can lengthen the O polysaccharide of the LPS. So what happens? This will prevent the membrane attack complex formation and insertion in the membrane. And if you are putting the complement components away from the surface of the cell. Some gram-positive bacteria release enzymes. Those enzymes break down some of the complement components like the C5A, which is like chemotactic and at the same time uh, have inflammatory uh, role. Uh, Murgzella catalase, a gram-negative uh, coca, binds vitronectin. Vitronectin is one of the serum proteins and these bindings actually interfere with the polymerization of the C9. So the complement is activated to its full stage even to uh, C8. However, C9 fails to polymerize to form the membrane attack uh, complex. And actually this last uh, finding was like one of the major findings in my uh, PhD thesis maybe like 15 years uh, ago where we showed that indeed Moroxella catarrhalis uh, by binding the vitronectin from the human serum prevents the polymerization of uh, C9 and it interferes with the late stages of the complement.
Government uh, Cafe. Uh, by this, we uh, finish our talk about the complement system, its activation, its regulation, and how the bacteria is evaded. We can summarize this in a small video we will see uh, together. Complement consists of a group of serum proteins that activates inflammation, destroys cells, and participates in opsonization. Complement can be activated by a number of different foreign molecules. The complement proteins respond in a sequential manner, producing a cascade of reactions. The major components are C1 through C9, named in the order that they were discovered, not in the order in which they function. The complement cascade can be activated by the classical pathway or by the alternative pathway. In the classical pathway, C1 becomes activated when it bonds to an antigen antibody complex. The activated C1 then cleaves C2 into C2A and C2B and C4 into C4A and C4B. C2B and C4B combine to form a protease called C3 convertase. C3 convertase then cleaves C3 into C3A and C3B. In the alternative pathway, antigens such as endotoxin, polysaccharides, or cell wall components react with C3B. Small amounts of C3A and C3B are constantly being formed from C3, but without activation they are soon destroyed. C3B reacts with the proteins factor B, factor D, and properidin to form a complex called C3 convertase, which cleaves C3 into C3A and C3B. Both of these pathways of complement activation follow the same sequence after cleavage of C3. C3A is involved in stimulating inflammation. C3B reacts with other complement components to form C3 convertase, which forms more C3A and C3B. C3B also attaches to the surfaces of microorganisms. Phagocytes have a binding site for C3B. Therefore, microorganisms with C3B bound to their surfaces are more susceptible to phagocytosis. Coating of bacteria to make them more susceptible to phagocytosis is called opsonization. Addition of properidin to C3 convertase results in formation of C5 convertase, which cleaves C5 into C5A and C5B. C5A enhances inflammation and acts as a chemoattractant for phagocytes. C5B reacts with other complement components including C6, C7, C8, and C9 to form a membrane attack complex. This structure forms a hole in the cell membrane and causes cells to lyse. As you have seen, we have seen here in this video that uh, when C2 was activated, it was cleaved into C2A and C2B, and it was mentioned here that uh, C2B uh, is the one that's going on uh, for the next step. So this is like uh, uh, different uh, references talking about different things. So some schools go with the annotation that the 2A is exception where the A is the one continuing and the B is the one uh, released trying to get over this confusion they try to straighten up the thing and say always the B is the one which going to continue but for the sake of our course for the sake of our exam we'll stick for what what, what we have said in the lecture that the the A will, the C2A is the one that's continuing with the C4B to activate C3. But you should be aware that there are textbooks out there that will mention that the B is the one that's going. And now we come to the end of our first lecture together. We talked about the complement system, a little bit of its history and its composition, how it is activated and what are the outcomes of this uh, activation, the cytolysis, the inflammation, and opsonization, how a complement uh, regulation takes place in uh, the host to prevent any adverse effect, 
and finally have some uh, bacterial pathogen can evade killing by uh, the queen. Uh, thank you for your attention and hopefully we will meet soon uh, in our next lecture inshallah. And please make sure if you have questions to uh, direct them to us and we'll try to make uh, an online session for questions and